بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أزواجه وذرياته وأهل بيته وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم So <coughs> this is the second uh, class introductory class so introduction still and it's part two of the introduction uh, what we have learned so far and we mentioned in the last class was that how many letters are there in the Arabic alphabet there are 28 letters and some ulama say 29 they say that the Alif and Hamza are different letters we will say 28 in this class so 28 letters we mentioned them last time and the right way to pronounce those letters and uh, we mentioned that these letters uh, first of all we mentioned the short vowels the fatha the bamma the kasra and we mentioned how uh, these are used and before they weren't used in Arabic and then as people came into Islam uh, we needed to use these uh, so that it would be easy for them to understand and try to pick up how to recite and how to read and how to make words in Arabic. We mentioned the names, how they came up with the name Fatha, how they came up with the name Kasra, and how they came up with the name Dhamma because since they weren't being used before, they never had any names for them. And uh, then we talked about when you join these letters together then you make up words of course and when you make these words up you join the words and you make sentences so when you join the letters and you use the different vowels the short vowels on them you will make words and a word in arabic is called alavdu love all right and we mentioned last week that the plural of the word love is al in Arabic. And this is a plural uh, that is used for many different plurals also, but loves and then al is the plural. Uh, al means words. So a word in Arabic is called al and the plural of loves is al fav I'lamu, understand very well, As'adakum Allahu ta'ala fi darain May Allah give you success and good fortune in both the worlds. Anna kulla ma yatakallamu bihi al-insanu yusamma lafzan That everything that a person utters, yatakallam bihi al-insan. Insan means a person so whatever a person yatakallam whatever he utters and whatever he says yusamma lafzan it is called a love or it is called a word for example nahu zaydun shamsun qara'a sami'a min ila so zaydun it's a word shamsun which means sun it's a word so these are examples of a noun and then qara'a sami'a qara'a means that one man read sami'a means that one man heard so these are examples of love which are verbs min ila min means from ila means till so these are examples of a word 
which is a particle or a prepper preposition. They're also called huruf. So, words we will learn later on are of three kinds. Uh, meaningful words are of three kinds. Ism, fi'al, harf, noun, uh, verb, and a particle or preposition. So, this is what we mentioned last week um, about love. Now, in this class, we will learn how this loves or word changes into different forms to give different meanings. All right? Uh, in Arabic, we have something which is called the root word or the masdar, a, a word which is the source. Masdar means source. Everything originates from the masdar. So, we will learn how this masdar or this word changes into different forms to give different meanings. So changing, the word changing, this is what we're going to uh, talk about right now because this is what we're learning in this class. It's called ilm sarf the knowledge of sarf or ilm tasrif the knowledge of changing, tasrif. Alright? Or taghyir, it means to change. Linguistically, in the dictionary, the meaning of sarf or a tasrif is changing. Something that's changing. Alright? Lughatan, this is what it means. You know, we're going to, whenever we learn terms in Arabic, we're always going to say Lughatan, this means this, and Istilahan, this means this. Meaning, in the dictionary meaning or the literal meaning of this word or this term is this, and Istilahan, uh, or the technical meaning, is this. So, there are going to be many, many Arabic terms that we will learn and when understanding these terms or trying to understand these terms, if we understand the literal meaning, it makes it much easier to understand the technical meaning or istilahan, what it means. What does istilah mean? Lughatan or the dictionary meaning, all right? If we say something, the literal meaning of something, the dictionary meaning of something, you're going to say Lughatan. Lughatan, this means this. And if you say Istilahan, meaning in the term uh, that we're trying to understand in this uh, Arabic uh, grammar, what does it mean Istilahan? Meaning what does it mean technically? Istilahan is from the word Sulha. The meaning that the scholars of Arabic agreed upon. Alright, so, Lughatan, the dictionary meaning, the literal meaning, Istilahan, the meaning that the scholars of Arabic agreed upon. Istilah, the word Istilah is from the word Sulha, which means to agree upon, or, you know, a more broad meaning is to make peace and to mend or to settle differences. So over here, istilahan means something that they agreed upon, the, 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 the meaning of the term that they uh, agreed upon. <clears throat> so, the word sarf or tasrif, lughatan means changing, meaning the literal meaning is changing, and istilahan, the technical meaning of it is changing the verbal noun into different forms, okay? <clears throat> so over here, we have al-mastaru. So it's the verbal noun, okay? So we are changing the verbal noun into different forms. The mastar, it means the verbal noun or the source, okay? I think I spelled verbal wrong, let me fix that. <clears throat> All right, the verbal noun, and let me get out of the way. So it means the source, all right? Uh, 
place of origination, where words originate from. All right? For example, the word al All right? This is going to be the verbal noun. This is the source. This is the master. This is where the, the verbs are going to originate from. So you will see in it, there's the fa, the ain, and the la. All right? So to make the, the word fa'ala, which is the past tense, or, you know, fa'al um, al-madi, uh, so you would just put a fatha, fatha, fatha on it, on the three root letters, and that's where you get uh, al uh, fa'ala, which means that one man did. Okay? So this was the mustar, and from it, we changed it and we brought it into this and it brought a new meaning which is that one man did. Now in the same manner from this master we got fa'ilun. Fa'ilun, we put an alif after the fa and we put a fatah here, a kasra here, and a dhamma here, and, or two dhammas, dhammatain, and it became fa'ilun which means the doer. Okay? In the same manner if al we brought an alif in the beginning and this became a command. So that one man did. Or, or sorry, uh, like you're going to command somebody, do this. Ifal. Alright, so this is a command. And then fa'alul is also another word that originated from the, the masdar al fa'al. Another example is, <clears throat> oh, fa'alun means. Uh, it's a name that Allah uses, فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيدُ Allah, is, Allah does whatever He wants, so it's a form of exaggeration uh, that He does whatever He wants, whenever He wants, so it's uh, a word that came out of the Masdar. Another, الجلوسو. الجلوس means to sit. This is the Masdar, it is the source. And from it, we're going to take out more words like jalasa. It's the fil madi. Uh, you put a fatha, fatha, fatha on the three root letters, and you got the meaning that one man sat. Jalison, just like that, it means that uh, the sitter, okay? That person is sitting, okay? Jalis. Ijlis, sit. When you're commanding somebody, and majlis a gathering or a sitting it's called a majlis so this is all coming from the masdar so now we know what <coughs> masdar is and like I explained uh, a sarf or tasrif the literal meaning is to change and the technical meaning or istilahan what it means is to change the master to change the root word or the source or the verbal noun into different forms to achieve different meanings just like we achieved a different meaning by that one man sat or the doer or that one man did that one man sat uh, the doer ijlis sit you're commanding somebody and majlis so you changed it around or you added a letter or you changed the vowels, the short vowels around and you got different meanings. <coughs> so now we know what masdar means and we know what sarf means and we know what tasrif means, another word for sarf. And this is the knowledge, this is the, the ilm that we are going to learn, ilmu sarf the knowledge of Saf. Alright, so uh, in this Masdar what we're going to do is we're going to sometimes change the uh, the signs, you know, the Fatah, the Makasra, the short vowels and it will bring different meanings. Sometimes we're going to add letters like we did on Majlis, we added a meme, we added this meme and it, it, it brought out a, a, a different meaning and sometimes we will uh, uh, you know add different symbols like we did on the fa'al we brought a shadda there 
and then this will bring different meanings, okay? Now, we're done with that, so let me erase that, and we will go to our example at thud. okay? So, less stuff on the board, it's easier to understand. All right, at-talbu, all right? At-talbu is the masdar, it's the source, it's the root word, and it means to seek, to find, to seek, to search for. All right, talaba, so if we drop the alif and lam and we put a fatha and a fatha and a fatha, these signs on top of it, talaba, the meaning becomes he sought, all right? <clears throat> and then if you add an alif after the ta and then you put a kasra on the lam and you put two dhammas or dhammatain on the ba it becomes seeker all right the doer of that verb which means seeker utlub all right uh, if you add an alif in the beginning and you put those signs on it utlub it means to seek Go and seek it, go and find it, you're telling somebody. And matlubun, something which is sought after. Alright, talibun, the seeker, matlubun, something which is sought after. Another thing to notice over here is that at-talbu has three letters, which are, we're going to know them as uh, the root letters or huruf al-asliyah and inshallah I'll write this down on the board soon so we can see it <clears throat> alright so we got three examples now we got an example of al-fi'lu we got the example of al-julusu and now we got the example of talbu let's get one more example al-ilmu alright al-ilmu is another master what does it mean to learn to know, all right, al-ilm, from the word knowledge, all right, to know. Alimun, or alima, if you were to take it to the past tense, uh, alima means that one man knew, and you changed it to the word alimun, it means one who knows, or a scholar, i'lam, you changed it to this, it means to know, and ma'lumun, it means something which is known. So you will see that these root letters, ayn, lam, and meem, are in each of these words. Uh, over here, ta, lam, ta, lam, and ba, are in each of these words. So the root letters are there, and from the master we changed the word around, and brought it to uh, different form, and you got different meanings from that. So this is basically what ilmu sarf is that you're adding, subtracting, transforming, changing in the voweling and this is ilmu sarf the knowledge of changing the word around from the master to something else to bring different meanings to it alright so let's erase all of that and we can move forward <coughs> All right, so each different form has its own different meaning and those meanings they cannot be expressed except through those certain forms. All right, so again, what is surf? Surf? Surf is changing. And what are we doing in this surf? We are changing the masdar or the root word or the the verbal noun or the imperative, you know, there's many names in English that they give for it, the derived noun. So we're changing that masdar, where everything originates from, into different forms. Why are we doing this? The question is why? Why are we doing this? In order to express different meanings. So this is what sarf is all about. And you will find out which form goes with which meaning. You will learn in this uh, class certain principles and where to ap 
apply these uh, principles to achieve the meaning you want to express for <coughs> pure and proper Arabic. And once you know how to express the, the proper words, you can now put the words together to make proper sentences. So this al musarf has to do with the word in Arabic, okay? The beginning of the word, the middle of the word, the ending of the word, and the voweling of the word, and the, you know, put adding and subtracting letters from the word, and it'll make different meanings. It doesn't have to do with sentences. It only has to do with particular words and changing the word around. When we group words together and make sentences and use different words and you know uh, show the uh, make different sentences and make different signs in the end of the sentences this is called al munnah and this or the 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 science of syntax so inshallah when we get to that we will learn that but right now we're just dealing with the science of changing words okay and this is what is called al musaf now the next thing to understand is the letters of the master like i said there are the root letters right so most masters or source or root words or the verbal nouns are formed from three base letters all right so let's get the examples up there <coughs> three base letters so let's take the example of an nasl okay all right there's one example and let's get another example al harbu all nasl means to help Al harbu means to run. All right, and another example. Let's say at tarku to leave. or in the master al harbu at tarku you will find the three root letters the alif lam that comes in the beginning it is only there to make this a noun okay it's called a verbal noun so when you have alif lam in the beginning you will uh, that's a sign that it is a noun al makkah all right, Al Medina. You put Alif Lam in the beginning, but the word, actual word, is actually Medina, right? Or Makkah. So in the same manner, Al Nasru, Nasr is the actual word. Harb is the actual word. Tarq is the actual word. And in it, you will find the first root letter, the second root letter, and third root, from right to left. The first root letter, the second root letter, and the third root letter. Al-Tarku, Ta'ra, and Kaf, the first root letter, the second root letter, the third root letter. So the, what's the first root letter? an -nun. Oops, write that better. What's the first root letter? an -nun. The second root letter is a Sa'd. And the third root letter is a Ra. In this, the Ha is the first root letter. All right, let's just write it like this. And the Ra is the second root letter, and the Ba is the third root letter. In this, a Ta, and a Ra, and a Kaf. Okay? <coughs> so in the root word, you will find the root letters, or they're called the original letters. Because remember, you add 
diff more letters to it which are not the original letters to make it into different meanings like we did with majlis you know we had a jim, a lam and a seen uh, let's take this over here like we had a jim and a lam and a seen which means to sit, you added a mean to it in the beginning. This is not the root letter, this is an added letter, this is not the original letter, but it made the meaning into a gathering or a sitting. So we'll put a sitting. All right? So the words in Arabic or the verbs in Arabic they will either <clears throat> be triliteral, where the root letters are three, or quadriliteral, where the root letters are four. In Arabic, they're called thulathi, or which means it's from the word thalatha, which means three. So the 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 root letters are either going to be three in a verb. Oh. Ruba'i, or they're going to be Ruba'i from the word Arba, meaning four. Okay, let me put that up there. So, Thulafi, or Ruba'i, all right, Thulafiyun. Put a shadda on top. Thulafiyun o rubaiyun. So, from the word thalatha, which means three, or from the word arba, which means four, so either the root letters will be three, haraba, tara, and kaf, to leave, to run, to help, and Either they're going to be Ruba'i, and I'll put up some uh, examples of Ruba'i in a second. So what are these called? These are called the original letters, or they're called the root letters. And in Arabic, we're going to call them, let me mark, put it right over here, Al-Huruf, Al-Huruf. Huruf in Arabic means letters. So al huruf letters and asliya. Al huruf al asliya. So as al huruf al asliya. Asli means the Asl, the original, okay? The real, the original. So, al huruf al asliya, the real letters, the original letters, okay? So, noon, sad, and ra are. So, for example, if there's a word like, there's a master like al julus, al julus means to sit. Al julus means to sit, okay? Al julus. So, jim, lam, and sin are the root letters, okay? This wow in there is an extra letter. It's not from the root letters. It's not from the, the, the original letters. So, jim, lam, and sin, so the, all the other words that are going to form from the master, they're all going to have the jim, the lam, and the sin in them, okay? So, al julusu. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's go on. So I said that um, these are triliteral, right? They are three letter, and then there will be some which are four lettered, all right? So let's give a few more examples of triliteral before we go on ahead. To cook, all right? To cook. How do you say it? to cook? <clears throat> you say atabhu, atabhu. So 
This means to cook. All right. And another word is, let's say, alhamdu. Alhamdu is a very popular and famous word. So, alhamdu means to praise. All right. Al-tabkhu means to cook, to cook, and alhamdu means to praise. So, these are thulathi, all right, they're triliteral. They're, in the master, there are three al-huruf al-asliya, the original letters. What are the original letters in al-tabkhu? There is the ta, the first one, the ba, the second one, and the kha, the third one. In alhamdu, there are the three original letters. What are they? The ha, the mean, and the dad. Alright? So these are the three root letters. Now, so we got quite a few examples of uh, triliteral or thulathi, th when the master has three root letters in it. So I told you the verbs in Arabic, imma thulathiyun wa imma rubaiyun, they will either be three-lettered uh, three or they'll be four-lettered. Triliteral or quadriliteral. So let me give some examples of ruba'i. Okay? Let me give some examples of ruba'i when the root letters are four and not three. Most of the time you're going to get three root letters. But sometimes in the Quran and the Hadith you're going to find many words which are four lettered. For example, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرُضُ زِلْزَالَهَا Zalzala, all right? To shake, and let me put that up there. Azal Zalatu. Azalzalatu, all right? So it basically, you know, when there's an earthquake or to shake, When there's a really strong shake, azalzala, okay? It's in the Quran, Ida Zulzila. So, in it, what we're trying to learn is Ruba'i. So, there are four root letters. So, one, first one is the Za. Alright, I re remember Alif Lam is there just to make it a noun, okay? So, Za, the second one is a Lam, and the third one is a Za, and the fourth one is a Lam, okay? One, two, three, four. So sometimes there's going to be four root letters in a verb. So zalzala. There's a za and lam, za and lam. They're repeated. Basically in Arabic, when repetition comes, a lot of times it's giving the, the more emphasis in the word, making the word stronger. So it's not just a regular shake, it is a very, very, very strong shake of the earth. This is the last day. So the, sh the earth is going to shake the way it has never ever shook before. Alright? And it's going to basically destroy the whole world. Alright, moving on. There's another word uh, in Surah to... I think it's in Surah to Zilzal itself. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَسْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ Okay, not in this surah. It's in Al-Qari'ah. The other word that I'm trying to get at is in Al-Qari'ah. Who can tell me what it is? Al-Qari'atu mal-Qari'ah Wa ma adraka mal-Qari'ah Yawma yakunu al-Nasu kal-Farash al-Mabthuth Wa takunu al-Jibalu kal-Ihni al-Manfush 
فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هادية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية All right, so what is the word? إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ All right, wrong surah. So, بُعْثِرَ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ So, the word is أَلْبَعْثَرَةُ So it's in Surah Adiyat. I've been reading Surah Al-Qariya and then uh, Zilzal, the one before and the one after. But the one it, it is, is Surah Al-Adiyat. So Al-Ba'tharatu. So this is an example of Ruba'i. It has a Ba, an Ayn, a Tha, and a Ra. These are the four root letters in this word so let's put it down ba ain atha and a ra okay so one two three four so sometimes they're going to be rubai all right the na the verb it's either going to be three lettered or it's going to be four lettered it's not going to be anything other than that all right so I gave you two examples, Az-Zalzalatu, Al-Ba'tharatu. There's another example, Waswasa, all right, which means to whisper. Shaitan was whispering in Adam and Eve to go and eat the fruit. So the word used is Waswasa. It's all, it also comes in Surah An-Nas. You waswisu fi sudur in nas So the Shaitan, he uh, whispers in the hearts of the people. All right, let's go on. So this was the case for verbs, three-lettered or four-lettered, all right? As far as nouns are concerned, they will either be, you know, three-lettered, they will either be four-lettered, five-lettered, and sometimes even six-lettered verb uh, nouns we will get, okay? So... Ruba'i thulathi, ruba'i khumasi, five-lettered word. I'll, mark, I'll, I'll write them up there so that we can get an example of them. Okay, so a noun which is three-lettered, let's say rajulun. All right, three letters in it, and it's a noun. All right, it means man. An example of... A uh, four-lettered word, uh, a noun. Now we're not discussing verbs right now. We're only discussing. We are discussing uh, nouns right now, right? So let's say akrab, akrabun. Okay. What does akrab mean? It means scorpion. All right, scorpion, akrabun. All right, a five-lettered word. A five-lettered noun is um, quince. Quince, um, in, in Arabic, how do you say it? You say safar jalun, right? <coughs> safar jalun. Which means quince, Q U I N C E. Quince is a small um, tree, a nice looking tree, which has beautiful um, fruits on it that they look like pears, but they're not pears, they're different kind of uh, fruit. 
and uh, it has a fruit just like it looks like a pear it's golden golden yellowish so what is it called it's called a quince and in Arabic you call it safar jalun so how many letters in this three and this four one two three and four and this one two three four and five all right and then you even have nouns which are six lettered all right So how will you, what is an example, let's say, Ankabut, all right, Ankabut, what does Ankabut mean, all right? Spider. All right, so we got, now we got a noun which is one, two, three, four, five, six letter. So three lettered, four lettered, five lettered, and now six lettered, but we are discussing verbs, and the verbs are either going to be Three letter, imma thulathiyun, wa imma rubaiyun, or they will be four lettered. All right, so this is all done. We're going to move on and explain something else. All right. The next thing that we must understand is the scale used as a model for all verbs. All right, the scale. The scale, we will understand, it is called Al-Mizan. Al-Mizan As-Sarfi. Alright, Al-Mizan as sarf Al-Mizan al-Sarfi. Scale. Alright? Mizan basically means a scale. And sarf is the ilm that we are uh, learning, the, the knowledge that we are trying to learn, ilm al-sarf. So, the scale contains three letters because three letters is the least you can find on a verb. Alright? And there are usually three letters in a verb, like I just said, and sometimes there'll be four. I will explain what, how it's uh, measured when it's four, but let's go into the three first. Because, right, you know, the scale is usually on something what most often happens, what's mostly used, okay? So the three letters that are used for the scale are fa. Ain and Lam. Alright? Fa, Ain and Lam. The reason why we're using these letters, these are going to be like the model or the base letters that we're going to use throughout this book and throughout this knowledge that we are studying in Arabic, the Ilm al-Sarf. We're going to be using Fa, Ain, Lam as the model, alright? As the base letters. <clears throat> why do we use these? The reason why is because fa'ala fa'ala basically means to do. All right? Fa'ala fa'ala it means to do. All right? So every verb can be expressed by this word because whenever somebody is doing any verb, any action they're actually doing something, right? Right? So, fa'ala means to do, so it can be used as an alternative to that word. It can be expressed by it, and it can be used as an alternative to it. In every verb, something will be done. So that's why the, uh, the Arabic grammarians, they use this 
as the model and the base word and letters. All right. So the letters fa and lam are used as model and base letters. So fa'la is the example we will use to understand the different verbs and how these different verbs conjugate into different forms, right? So fa'ala, yaf'alu, this is also the example used, if'al, you can see the fa'in lam are being used, fa'il, and fa'il is the word that is the example used in the book that we are studying in the one of the diagrams in the beginning pages so the word uh, the the book that we are studying it's called fundamentals of classical arabic so f this is used so you will see that this verb and these three letters are used as the base letters okay now let's give some examples <coughs> A verb that has three root letters, okay? Let's give some examples of a verb that has three root letters. For example, satara, okay? Sin, ta, and ra, all right? Satara, all right? What does this mean? It means to hide. Satara means to hide, all right? Or jalasa. It means to sit. And fataha. To open. And What's the last one? Let's use the khala, okay? Four examples. The khala, which means to enter. All right, to enter. So satara to hide, jalasa to sit, fataha to open, dakhala to enter. All right, so just like fa'ala has three letters, fa'ala, fa'in lam, all of these words have three letters. All right. Sin ta ra, jim, lam sin, fa ta ha, and dal kho and lam. All right. So you can see how we are using these base letters now. Uh, all of these words or verbs fit the scale exactly. Three over three. So let's bring this down. This is a scene, and then a ta, and then a ra. All right? So, three over three. The fa, on the fa, uh, parallel to the fa, the scene, parallel to the ain, the ta, and parallel to the lam is the ra, satara. In the same manner, parallel to the fa is the gene here. And the lam in the second position and the sin in the third position. In the first position you got the jim and the second position you got the lam and the last position you got the sin. Let's go one more. In the fa position, in this word you also have a fa. In fataha. In the second you got the ta and in the third you got the ha. Alright, fataha. So, so they are 3 over 3, no more and no less. So just like fa'ala is three lettered, so are all of these words. And like the verb dakhala, <coughs> the, in the fa position you got the dal, the ain position you got the kha, and the lam position you got another lam. So dal, kha, and lam. Okay? So... Now we're understanding what this means by scale, that you are measuring it, and it comes, you know, 
3 over 3, there's no more, and there's no less. All right? All right, let's go on. So, the first root letter of al-fi'lu was fa. The first root letter of al-satru is seen. The first root, the second root letter of al-fi'lu was ain. The second root letter of satru is ta. And the third was lam. And over here, it is ra. So, what will we say? Whatever comes parallel to the fa, we will say fa ul kalima. All right? Or the fa position, or in Arabic, fa ul kalima. All right? Fa ul kalima. Meaning, the fa of the word. So, what's the fa of the word? Seen. And then, ain ul kalima. The ain of the word, so I'll ask sometimes, what is the ain of the word of jalasa? So you will say, whatever is coming in the ain position, so the ain position, the second letter, it's the lam, so you will say lam. And then the last one, the lam al kalina, the lam of the word, or the last uh, letter. So what is the lam kalima in fataha? It is the ha. What is the ain kalima in fataha? It's the ta. And what is the fa kalima in fataha? It's the fa. So the first letter, the second letter, or the third letter. Also called fa ul kalima, ain ul kalima, and third uh, and lam ul kalima. So the first root letter which comes parallel to the fa is called the fa kalima, meaning the fa of the verb. And the second root letter which comes parallel to the ain is called ain ul kalima, meaning the ain of the word. And the third root letter which comes parallel to the lam is called the lam ul kalima, meaning the lam of the word. So this scale is meant to identify the form of the word weight and it includes the number of letters the order of the letters, the harakat on it, the fathas, or the sakanat on it, if it's a sakin, and the extra and original letters. All right, sometimes you're going to have extra letters on there. So, for example, um, on, the fa on the wazan of fa'ilun, you got Nasirun. Alright. So, there's an extra Alif in there. But it's coming on the Wazan. So you got many words that come on this same scale, on the same weight, on the same Wazan. So, what is it called? Uh, Nasir, or let's take another example. Jalisun, somebody who's sitting. Fatihun, somebody who's opening. Dakhilun, somebody who's entering. Um, there's many, many <coughs> examples that come on this wazan or on this scale. <coughs> so wazan in Arabic means weight or scale, okay? Wazan. Waznun, okay? Let's say waznun. To me, the scale or weight. All right. <clears throat> so, in Arabic, you can say, "Satara ala wazni faala." Satara ala wazni faala. Jalasa ala wazni faala. Fataha ala wazni faala. Nasirun ala wazni faalun. Or Let's say another word like mansur, mansurun. Let me erase this. All right. So mansurun. 
somebody who's helped. Nasirun means helper, right? Mansurun means somebody who's helped. So ala mansurun ala wazni maf'ulun. All right, it's on the same wazn as on the same uh, scale as maf'ulun. Um, so now we understand uh, the scale and the mizan when we are mentioning mizan. Last thing before we end this class, I'm just going to mention something that I said. Um, this is all thulathi, right? This is all thulathi. There are three lettered, but what if they are four lettered? So they will. They also come sometimes. So we're going to make a fa. An ain, a lam, and a lam. All right. So there's going to be two lam kalimas. When the when the verb has four letters, when they when it had three letters, the wasn the 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 mizan the scale the base will be faala, and when it has four letters, it's going to be faala. All right. So the fa kalima, the ain kalima, the first lam kalima, and the second lam kalima. <coughs> <coughs> so the example is ba'thara. All right? To raise. So ba is coming in the fa position and the ain is coming in the ain position. The fa is coming in the first lam position and the ra is coming in the second lam position. Ba'thara. Another word um uh, let's use uh Waswasa to whisper. So, fa position is the wow. The scene is the ain position. Another wow for the first lamb position and another scene for the second lamb position. So it's coming on the wazn of fa'lala. Waswasa ala wazni fa'lala. And you waswisu ala wazni you fa'lilu. You was wisu, you fa'lilu. So, inshallah, when we get to ruba'i, the four lettered verbs, we will explain that. But for now, I think this is good enough. Inshallah. Um, so, this was the second introductory class. Um, inshallah, the first class uh, is after this. Uh, this was all an introduction to Arabic uh, grammar. And we had the first class, and this is the second. Uh, introductory class, inshallah, we will have the next class, which, which will be the first class in Arabic grammar. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, rabbik fir warham, wa anta khayra rahimun.